Sam's coming to Inglewood uh, means a great deal uh, for me personally uh, and for our city. The NFL gave the Los Angeles Rams permission to relocate for the 2016 campaign in our city and in specific into Inglewood. And so there's a great movement that's happening and it's really a renaissance of sorts. After 21 years, the city is finally getting a football team. I have been in LA a lot of years. This is the biggest thing I've ever covered. We're here with some of the founding members of the Bring the Rams Back to Los Angeles group, and they have a message tonight. Mission accomplished! I, you know, the first football team I've ever uh, liked uh, was, was the Rams, because like, it's a big age difference. Like, I'm 65 years old. And, and, and when I was a kid, the Rams was our team. They were right there in the Coliseum, you know. Every kid wanted a Rams helmet for Christmas, you know. And, we, and if, you, if you picked a name for your team, you wanted to be the Rams. Okay. And now I heard that you got one of the first people to get uh, season tickets to the L.A. Rams. That's right. You know, I, the Rams, that, as far as I'm concerned, they're just coming back home. You know, it's been a long time, and they're, they're just coming back. Check out what's going on behind us here. You can see some of the construction work underway. This city is anxious to open up its stadium. This is a defining moment for a man, James Butts, a city, Inglewood, and a region, Southern California. And the good part about it is that the stadium is not going to cost the city of Inglewood any money. Mayor Butts said initially, we're not going to use any city money. We're not going to use that, no public money. Mayor Butts was correct. The owners of the uh, Rams are paying for the cost, and the city get the opportunity to reap the benefits of the revenue that it brings in. This project, if you see, is a big dirt lot right now, but it's manifested itself in so many ways. It's had an impact on community pride. It's had an impact on the reputation, the image of this city, and that begets confidence. Confidence begets investors. Investors build projects that generate tax revenue. Tax revenue translates into services for the, so the residents that they don't have to pay for themselves. And so this project, like the forum before it, means better quality of life for the residents of Inglewood, period. I would argue that uh, we've had sports venues. We had the forum for 40 years, since 1967. Um, and the Lakers were at their peak in the 80s, you know, Showtime, Magic Johnson, et cetera, even in the 90s, and it made no difference to, for the city. It made no difference for the city, um, and uh, I'm not sure that's gonna change. Actually, there was something put into the agreement where the city of Inglewood's gonna make $25 million a year. It's a, uh, a public victory because it is the culmination of a community working together. The Rams coming to Inglewood didn't just happen because a bunch of owners, commissioner, decided that they would. The path had to be made clear by the people who are in Inglewood. This whole project was approved uh, with no public input, bypassed a vote that really should have gone to the people, and they fast-tracked it um, for a reason. There's no, envi no environmental review and in, a, in a city that is right in the flight path. That seems really dangerous to me. So there's no citizen input, and you can bet this would never happen in a city like Beverly Hills or Pasadena or other cities. It would never happen. Um, and I think it's just disrespectful to the residents um, to not have a say in the future of the city. He cares very much about the people of the city. He serves them. I want to serve the residents, and so I've been able to, with the council, make tough decisions to do things that would never be considered. It's a huge, impactful thing and it's going to impact the residents, it's going to impact traffic and all that, and yet it didn't undergo any review, which I think is wrong. This project alone will make a massive improvement and contribution to money to be spent locally to improve our police force, our parks, more rapidly renew our streets, do the things that the residents want and deserve. The people of Inga will be, will be affected by the Hollywood Park project that includes the stadium in a variety of ways. Football is simply one component of a very large revitalization. This project is going to be unlike any other football deal in the history of this nation. Right now, I just think that the city officials are so 
in love with the idea of having a pro team, but that's, uh, it's not a big enough vision. It doesn't take into account the city itself. But what can we get out of it? How can we, how can we improve in ways, you know, really fundamental ways? I don't think anyone's thought about that, or if they have, I haven't heard it. Inglewood has a very bad reputation. And it's really tough to overcome the environment. It's one of those places in LA that uh, been sort of uh, profiled. I say, you know what the perception of Inglewood is? And I said this at their State of the City address at the forum. I said, you know the perception, right? That if you come to Inglewood, if you're me, I take my life into my hands. I said, that's the perception, not the reality. I think at, at the worst point was a place where pe that people avoided. I'm always, I always think of uh, the movie that came out, I think it was the early 90s, or maybe the late 80s, um, um, The Grand Canyon, and the movie with Kevin Klein and Danny Glover, and the movie opens with Kevin Klein driving home from a Laker game in the Forum. Uh, at that time, you know, the Forum was the place where the Lakers played. And so he's, the he, opening scene is he's driving home from, and he gets lost in Inglewood. And of course he ends up in a terrible dark alley, and. Black men come out, come out of the shadows to, you know, harm him. And then Danny Glover is a tow truck driver who kind of saves him, rescues him from this horrible situation. And I remember at the time, the city officials in England were so irate, so, so peeved by that, that they hired a publicist to somehow um, counter that, that one scene in that movie. Because, you know, an image uh, uh, was worth more than a thousand words and it does a thousand times more damage. And so that was sort of the prevailing view of Inglewood. Well, this is it's a good city, you know, I just don't like, um the reputation that it had in some places from people that, that's never even lived here, been here. I'm, I'm sort of a nativist. I really, I guess I defend it against, uh, against um, uh, kind of the, ne the, the negative images that really come along with any place being mostly black and Latino. Depends on who you talk to. If you want a negative story, you might talk to somebody that doesn't live in Inglewood. If you want a positive story, you might want to talk to some of the people who live here and who understand uh, who is here uh, what the businesses are, who the residents are, and the legacy that is very, very rich in Inglewood. I've been born and raised in Inglewood, friends in Inglewood, played outside, growing up in Inglewood. I grew up just across the Inglewood border, just across Van Ness, so like literally a half a block from Inglewood. And then I moved to Inglewood when I was uh, 16, 15, 16. So it's really home for me. So I'm always... Um, kind of amused from people when I tell people where I live and they kind of, um, even people within Los Angeles, uh, oh, oh, like they don't quite know how to react. No one ever complains. I've never heard anybody say, I gotta get out of Inglewood. The reputation, i.e. The, how the outside world sees Inglewood has never been good. Um, people feel that might be changing now with this mega development happening, but you know, for as long as I've been alive, it's not had a good reputation. And in the 90s, especially when uh, you know, gang activity was really high in LA and there was a lot of, you know, I think that was sort of peaked in the 90s. It was, um, you know, the place you didn't go to. In the 90s, uh, uh, Inglewood was a community that was first led by a divided council. Um, the idea of, of investing in, in Inglewood uh, was not as robust at that time. Uh, our crime rates uh, were significantly a high. And I've seen Inglewood from its glory days of being home to the three-peat Los Angeles Lakers. The racetrack, when it was booming and brought 38,000 to 41,000 people on an average day, and then I saw Inglewood decline with the housing crash and the recession, and the Inglewood I came back to was six months away from bankruptcy. This is a town that um, has struggled economically, um, struggled, struggled um, to, uh, for all kinds of improvements, and we suffer from the same negative self-perception. Um, we suffer from the effects of the bad reputation of being a mostly black and brown space. Not all that was said was true. Um, yes, there were uh, some crime statistics that uh, had validity. Yes, there were gang activities that were uh, valid. Um, but there was also a good story to tell about Inglewood. So when people were coming just to come for a concert, when people were coming just to come for a basketball game or a hockey game, people are going to now be living and working here 
in a different way than they ever were before. You know, like I was doing open house and I saw, and I, I talked to a young white couple and they, they came down and looked at the house. They said they had just bought one down the street and they uh, were looking, you know, because they wanted their friends to move in there. And then, you know, there's a whole thing of gentrification. That's a whole other discussion. And gentrification is kind of a polite word for white people will move in and the property values will go up and everything will get, will get the goods and services we finally, uh, uh, we've been asking for for a long time. Gentrification specifically is really about people with higher levels of income, higher social status, um, moving into communities that have been, for a while there, been lower income communities. I don't like what gentrification means. I don't like the racial implications. We're very, we talk around them, but that's what happens. It's a socioeconomic term and most people conflate it with a racial uh, term. We're talking about low-income communities is often low-income um, African-American, Latino communities, particularly in Los Angeles and in the California, and in California, um, and then it's typically more middle-income or whites who are moving in, and so there's also sometimes cultural clashes. Gentrification artificially raises the price, property values. I mean, houses here should not be a million dollars. That's ridiculous. It's a, it's a working-class city, mostly. Um, affordable housing is a big issue. There are people in Inglewood who lobbied very hard to get that stadium there because why? Their property values will go up. So my property that may cost $300,000 now, I'm banking on the fact that it may cost a million um, three, four, five years from now, that we're gonna catch up with the rest of um, you know, west side of Los Angeles in terms of property values. I think it'll be, it'll be, it'll be better for the community. Just to, just to mix it up a little bit. But I don't want the, the city to, you know, to flip over and become another Westchester, you know, where, you know, blacks can't even afford to live here. The challenge is that if you are really low income or if you are lower than the incomes that are coming in, a lot of times you don't have either the ability to stay or the ability to access those kinds of resources. Suddenly, magically, you know, you get, suddenly you get goods and services when, when white people show up in mass. But you have the folks who have been staunch supporters, uh, connectors, wanting to see things change in their communities. And when they start to do that, then they no longer can actually benefit from the changes. I don't want gentrification as it usually happens happens to happen here because it pushes people out, it changes the, the complexion of a city, and um, um, and it reconfigures the space, and I think this is an important space. What a lot of people are doing, they're conflating gentrification, saying, oh, isn't it terrible that whites are moving back to Inglewood? And that's just as racist as it was in the 60s when whites resisted blacks moving into the city of Inglewood. Gentrification typically has a negative connotation. There are absolutely some benefits to it, um, but the, the question always remains, where, where are the benefits and who gets to access those benefits? I think you're gonna see a lot of changes around there. I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be a few folks evicted so that they can, you know, rehab the properties and what have you, which I think it's gonna be a few people displaced, but for the greater good, you know? I mean, you know, things happen for the greater good. I guess we figure that's the price of progress. Um, and we need to think about the so-called, the price of so-called progress. People don't disappear. Being able to figure out ways to allow people to stay in communities while development is happening has been one of the big ires of um, redevelopment. We, we need an alternative to gentrification. I'm not sure what that would look like. Well, ideally, that we just, the developers or whoever come in, work with the city and improves on its own and improves as it is, that we don't have to throw out one population and get another in order to improve. You know, what does that say? It's going to be one of those places where on Sunday, if I want to just get out and just walk around and sight and see, I could go to Santa Monica and do it, you know. It's, and I think we'll be able to do that same thing here. Just go up there, have lunch, sit around the water, you know, sight, see, shop, look in the windows. You know, just spend the evening just right here in our community. I don't have to go across town to have a nice, pleasant afternoon. Football is simply one component of a very large revitalization in Inglewood. The stadium is going to uh, change a lot of things. You know, I think the city is going to put more money into to, to making the city look better. And there's going to be a lot of jobs which are going to bring people, a lot of people in here, all, all kinds of people. But it's anticipated the price will go up. Uh, only about half a percent next year, but who knows? I think by the fact that since the round is coming around, the projection might change. A renaissance, a rebirth.
will change the fortune of Inglewood forever. It's going to bring more tax dollars. It's going to bring, I say, more businesses into the community. And um, it's going to be a lot of money spent here, especially during those games. Having more people in your city purchasing products at your stores, the more jobs that will bring. It's just really a boost for the economy. I remember when they opened the Krispy Kreme donut down on Crenshaw and King Boulevard. It was built after the uh, unrest in 92. And when it opened, there were helicopters and ribbon cuttings. And a friend of mine who is a developer said, people, it's a donut shop. It's not the Taj Mahal. It's not gonna bring us anything but donuts. And I just thought that's, yeah, puts things in perspective. But we get so excited that anything comes. There are several studies that suggest that a stadium uh, doesn't necessarily impact property values. I can tell you that I've already experienced uh, an increase in values. There's a great deal of interest uh, in Inglewood uh, to the point where uh, there are people knocking on doors uh, trying to get people to sell. And so it's a good time to be a, a property owner in Inglewood. I watch people come in to, you know, you know, full crowd, you know, to that capacity, they go home. So it doesn't, you know, um, so far it hasn't benefited the city itself. Uh, that's not the job of the forum. You know, again, there's this missing link between what's actually here, the, 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 um, the, um, uh, I mean, you know, the, having forum is a plus for sure. But what is, how, why can't we benefit directly from it? The fact that the Rams are coming in, commercial property, is going sky high. Uh, I'm getting calls, one to two calls every day who are looking to purchase in Inglewood. It will destroy all of the myths and the perceptions that have existed for so many years. Whether the reputation will change, um, I think it takes more than a single development. That fear that maybe some people might have had at one time is no longer there. There's just a movement, and I think Mayor Butts is uh, largely responsible for that, which is to get you know, resources into our city and um, to bring jobs, to bring retail, to bring commerce, and it's just, it's, I think it'll be good all around. Look at what Staples Center did to downtown Los Angeles. Look at LA Live. Now imagine what's going to happen in Inglewood, it's gonna be five times bigger. It's a moment and an opportunity for pride. It's a moment and an opportunity for celebration. It's a moment and an opportunity to know that our future is brighter than our past. From this project will spread redevelopment throughout the Prairie, Manchester, and Century corridors, and it'll be a much more upscale Inglewood than anyone could have ever imagined. Inglewood will never be the same.